you don't love this panel. It's just cool that it's a table. But like, you don't love that. But you love building this business. And I think that that's such an interesting thing to discuss because so many people are out there trying to figure out like what they're passionate about. Like if I just find out what I'm passionate about, like yeah. you know, the whole like if you love what you're doing it, or if you, if, if you, whatever the oh, yeah. cliche, like you'll never work a day in your life yep. if you love what you do or whatever, yeah. all that nonsense. There's, there's a difference between loving the actual like end product or the process mm -hmm. and just loving like building something. And I was, I was doing a podcast this morning with a guy and I was talking about the fact that, you know, with work life balance, I, <clears throat> I have a big issue with that. Um, a big issue with that concept of, of work life balance just because the majority of people being like 99% use it as a reason to work less. Mm -hmm. You don't ever hear it for any other reason other than a crutch to why they need to go home at four. But, and with that, I explained to this guy, I was like, I was like, my social life sucks. It's like, I don't hang out with friends. But my business partners are my best friends mm -hmm. and like family and the people that I work with and that I'm dealing with and I'm talking to on a daily basis are my friends and I love what I do and I enjoy what I do. And I, when I'm sitting there on that podcast, like sitting here and having this conversation, like this is what I love to do. Yeah. And so I had the best social life it, like I, because I, I talk to friends all the time, even though I don't really go out and hang out with friends. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like you love the process. You love what you're building. Like, so what is it specifically about when you say like we love what we do? Like what specifically is it that the the part that that really like fires you up that gets you up out of the bed in the morning and, and excited to to go to work? Providing, I think, for on uh, my end, anyways, yeah. um, the fact that I think providing for others. Like I mm -hmm. take a immense. My wife, for example, right? My wife is not the stay at home. I would love it if my wife was like, "Listen, I don't want to work another day in my life. Yeah. I just want to take great care of these kids." Right? Yeah. It's just not my wife. Like her, she doesn't feel like she's adding value unless she's working, sure. right? And so there's a there's a certain thing where when she's working, she feels like she adds immense value mm -hmm. to our family as sure. a whole, right? And that's like a very prideful thing in her. Yeah. And she does add a ton of value to our family, right? I And I'm very much the same way. I think just as a, like a man of the household, right? Mm -hmm. There's that natural like pride in providing for your family sure. you know what i mean like putting your wife in a in a car and getting the new pair of shoes for your kids mm -hmm. you know what i mean the things having the ability to do things like that um to be able to provide for not just your family but your work family is yeah. a whole nother thing so as, as an like an owner of a company you know running a company or playing a leadership role in a company like to provide for numerous other roles in it and to mm -hmm. to see one little small decision how far that can go good or bad yeah you know what i mean there's sure. a lot of weight in that um but there's a i think there's a immense sense of um you know i gratitude and it's it's humbling um but at the same time it keeps you wanting more every yeah. single day i feel like when i was growing up um I always was around these people that own businesses or uh, I watched people that, and they always felt like they were just so stuck up and they always felt like they were so much better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like, like I really want to create something that nobody's better than anybody in the company. Yeah. You know, like, like I, you know, I was like, I'll, I'll pick up garbage when I go to an install mm -hmm. because I'm not better than you guys. Yeah. I, I'm just like you guys. I there's grew no, up. There's no making. Yeah. It. There, yeah, there's, no. yeah it's yeah. just like, I was that guy. Like I was laborer. I was digging ditches. I was doing all these things. I had no money. Like I'm nothing special. I just worked hard. Yeah. And, and that's my biggest thing is I think I just worked hard and, and, um, I, I don't think, um, from a passion level, I think I just fell in. I just, figured out like I'm, I'm good in sales but man I'm really good building processes and yeah. systems and I yeah. naturally just fell into that and I loved it and um, I think here I get to do that which makes me really happy I think just you know I jumped around a lot when I was working for the company I was always jumping I'm like man, I just I get unhappy after like a year or two years and I can always kind of feel it yeah and and everyone's like man it's just not good like you got to find and then when I when I finally and I had a perfect situation at multiple companies and I still just was never really happy. And then it, it, it's something about having our own thing and building our own business. Like I wouldn't ever imagine doing anything else. Like the happiest I've ever been, I would never consider doing anything else. Like, and I think it's just cause it's our baby yeah. and um, it's still a lot of the same things we've always done, but it's just 
it's our baby now. And so it's genuinely something I, I could never see myself doing anything different. You saw the daily bread, here's the new recipe. You can expect to see more transparency. 5,006 figure earners, this success to me. Giving the best of me, my living legacy. So we are headed downtown Greenville and we're going to uh, do a little tour and a little interview from uh, with the guys at Summit Solar and I uh, met these guys at the gym <coughs> coincidentally and I uh, had breakfast with uh, with one of them Derek Landino and I've talked a couple times with the uh, CEO uh, Josh Williams so we're gonna be sitting down with both of them I'm excited about this because you know the focus in this episode is, is business uh, in that area of life, and it would have been super easy for us to, you know, focus on our business. Um, it would have been selfish <laughs> slash easier uh, to focus on the business that we're launching. Uh, but I thought it'd be cool to take this opportunity to, to spotlight another business uh, in town. And I don't know a lot about what they do. I know they're in the solar industry, obviously, Summit Solar. Uh, I just like what these guys are doing because they seem to have. Um, I have it going on as far as winning in all the areas of the life. They're posting stuff on Instagram with, with their kids and with their wives and uh, the other stuff that they're doing outside of business and working out and, and all that good stuff. But the business itself, like the, down to like the logo is a really cool logo. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that they're doing is, is more on the, the modern um, side of things. And I think they have a very young, probably, um, uh, workforce and it's just you know fascinating for me to see these two young guys that are running a, uh, a successful business and so we're gonna hopefully sit down and see if we can get them uh, transparent and talk about some of the good uh, but also some of the bad the ups and downs of, of starting a business running a business the growing pains and take kind of taking it to the next level and I think it'll be an impactful conversation and hopefully it'll be a great uh, thing that they'll be able to use uh, as a spotlight for them for potential business. Like we didn't have much money growing up, either one yeah. of us, right? Like we didn't come from super wealthy families at all. And then we built up, I went from like making nothing to millionaire yeah. to all of a sudden, what the hell are we gonna go do, <laughs> right? I, yeah. It was the scariest thing ever. And then, you know, we had all these, we had these offers and I like, I was like, well, babe, it's gonna be fine. We're good, like sure. we got offers on the table. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's just take a breath and figure this out. And then to go tell her, it's like, well, actually, what if we spend our money <laughs> yeah. and try this yeah. with none other than my <laughs> old enemy? And so it was like, it wow. was just, uh, it was a funny journey, man. And and, um, and it definitely didn't feel like it was meant to be right at the beginning, right? Like it, it worked out, but uh, the first, it was kind of like our timeline was really like the first year, massive struggle, like we're figuring out what we want to be, who we want to be. Yeah. Um, understanding how to sell the product the right way, like being yeah. in a new market, everything sure. else. And so massive struggle the first year, but we, the whole time we grew, but it was a massive struggle, right? Yeah. Year two was really finding our cadence, like getting to know ourselves, where we stand in the industry, um, slowly, you know, recruiting the right people in and, and getting, actually having something that's recru recruitable, right? Yeah. Like it was, yeah, it was yeah, kind of sure. that point where it's like, no one wanted to work for a startup and we couldn't figure out a why. New market and we're like, different kind of like like i'm derek and this is josh like <laughs> you don't know us like <laughs> yeah. we we just we, we were one of the we largest this, companies uh -huh. in the united states but, and, well and then too is like moving to the south like we felt like you know like covered in tattoos all yeah. of a sudden we're just like man it's like sure. i'm sitting in meetings with you know guys and i can just clearly tell they're like yeah i'm not gonna go work with this guy yeah, you know what sure. i mean it was, it was tough finding like the hustle and work ethic down here and everything but um, you know, we really started hitting it well with the recruiting that second year. Um, in these last six months, we've just hit this massive explosive, like we, we launched all of our own operations, right? So initially yep. we would just sell and then we'd sub out the install work, which was a nightmare because subs yeah. sucked, sure. right? They did horrible work yeah, yeah. and it, uh, really was starting to hurt our reputation, which we're very big on. And we promised this premium experience. And mm -hmm. so, um, for when we launched our own installations, that was the game changer. I think you can, if you're good in sales, you can sell anything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. you could be yeah. excellent in solar. It's sure. the leadership piece and, and how to build a culture and, and um, manage people. And I think we've had a really good opportunity to learn from some of the best mentors out there, I think that, and we, we were patient um, and we really learned how to do things the right way. So that when we got to that point, mm -hmm. and it was just like, 
it just was natural. Yeah. I think so many people today, they're like, oh, I'm a, I want to be a manager now after like three months of doing yeah. something well, where it's like, dude, how about you do it for two years consistently and make good money, mm -hmm. take care of yourself first and learn and, and study. And then when you're ready, it will happen. And I think, you know, that's something, you know, people need to look back and kind of almost take a step back a little bit and say like, man, like take, take your time because it will be built so much better. You can build it now. Yeah. Right. And it will be good maybe, but it will be so much better if you just wait and, and learn from the guy that's doing it the best already. And I think we've had the opportunity to do that. So yeah, it's, like definitely. A, it's like that aggressive patience, yeah. like active, yeah. aggressive patience. Cause a lot of times patience seems like very passive. But it's like, no, you're, you're hustling and you're, you're going all out, but you're patient and waiting for your opportunity yeah. to respect that process. Yeah, 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 for sure. Tell everybody where they can um, find out more information about you. Cause you guys are in obviously Greenville. Yep. Illinois now. Yep. Atlanta. Georgia. Okay. So North Georgia. Carolina, South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. A lot of future markets. So on for the people rise. that are watching, they're from all over, all over the place. Where they, where can they find out more? MySummitSolar.com. MySummitSolar.com. So when it comes to your personal brand, how do you leverage that? Like a lot of people I feel don't get what a personal brand is mm -hmm. and the power of it. I have a client that uh, I just talked to this week who uh, we did one coaching session together. He sends me a message says, Hey bro, you made me six figures. I owe you a monster testimonial. So we got on Skype and I said, can you tell me the story? And basically from just a few simple strategies I gave him, he made over $600,000 wow. uh, in the year since that happened. Jeez. So it, it's just an incredibly powerful thing. How do you feel personal? How do you view personal branding in relation to how it affects your business, how it affects everything? So I probably have a, little, a different perspective um, than most on this. Number one, your personal brand is just your reputation. And specifically, you know, with what we're referring to is your, your reputation online uh, and on social right. media. Um, for me personally, with my business, uh, the insurance, um, one of our insurance agents, agencies and, and the one that I've been uh, building over the last four years, uh, it's very, very niche in the market that we serve, uh, the demographic that we serve. And because of that, um, I don't talk about it at all. I don't talk about um, really our processes. Um, and so all of the social media stuff that I've, that I've done over the last two years, not one transaction has ever been made ever because of that. Um, and I'm super proud of that. Um, because a lot of money has been invested, a lot of time, energy, resources, team now um, is right. invested into building this brand and, and knowing that not a penny um, has exchanged hands for that, it, to me, is something I'm extremely proud of um, as far as just being solely focused on, on adding value. What I know, though, is that we're in a very special, finite period of time, and I think we've probably got another five years um, whether you want to call it the largest land grab on social media, I just know that right, right now, never will there be a time in history will, mm -hmm. where it was a better and more efficient time to build a personal brand on social media. Right. And that the people that aren't doing it and aren't doing it at scale right now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, will regret it in a big, big, big way. Big, yeah. big, big way. Yeah. And, and people don't even understand what that means and how big it will be. Um, but the ones that kind of poke fun at all the stuff people do on social media and the ones that just use it for, you know, uh, leisure are going to be at a significant, significant disadvantage 10 years, 20 years down the road um, because they won't be able to catch up. You'll never be able to catch up to the people that went all in um, over these past few years and in the coming. Um, you'll never, ever be able to catch up.